Hey there, race fans. It's Race Day Top 5 with me, Frank Five. Bristol Motor Speedway, the last great Coliseum, the world's fastest half mile, Thunder Valley. It's got so many names for it, but we can all agree it brings out the best and the worst in the drivers and provides for some entertaining short track racing even on a Saturday night. And this past Saturday night, our first elimination race in the playoffs ended with guys faltering, four guys eliminated, 12 moving on, and another upset from a non-playoff driver. Let's get into all that happened at Thunder Valley. Number one, Chris Busher for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. Picks up their first win of the season, Busher's second career win since his fog-shortened Pocono victory back in 2016 with Front Row Motorsports. Won the Bass Pro Shops America's Night Race Saturday night at Bristol Motor Speedway, holding off Chase Elliott, William Byron, Chris Rebell, and Kyle Larson for the win. Opening round of the playoffs, three non-playoff drivers. Eric Jones at Darlington, Bubba Wallace at Kansas, and this past Saturday night with Chris Busher. Chris Busher this year, let's talk about him, has run better in most recent weeks. Early in the year, they were kind of trying to find their grip. Of course, the new a team that merged with Brad Kozlowski, now as the driver and an owner of the team. They had to get a little bit of, you know, footing right as far as where they were going as a team. They've had some really good runs this year. I mean, most notably, the big no mo most notable moment of the season was the Coca-Cola 600 where they were running in the top 10 and then he was involved in a wreck that caught him flipping. Then the following week, he couldn't race at Gateway because he contracted COVID. Then after he came back, he finished second at Sonoma to Daniel Suarez. And Bush was won really well over the summer. And I felt like, you know what? If this guy's got an opportunity to win and make the playoffs, he well he very well deserves it. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the job done. They couldn't get to victory lane. But they've run better this year. And Saturday night, they ran up front pretty much the entire night. It wasn't just pure strategy call. Because we know that Rosh Fenway Keselowski Racing has been kind of a struggle this year. And in recent years, even before Brad Keselowski jumped on board as a driver and a co-owner... RFK the entire night were very, very fast. Both cars, Busher and his owner and teammate Brad Keselowski, they were very fast the entire night. They led over half the race. They stayed up there, had great charge position, had great speed in their cars, holding off guys that are part of the playoffs, guys that were already blocked into the next round, guys that are trying to get into the next round. It was just an impressive performance by both of those guys. Keselowski had a chance to win until with less than 100 laps to go, a right front tire went down, and that's going to be a topic of discussion we'll get into later. He had a right front tire go down, had to come to pit road, fell lap down, never got a lap back, but he finished a solid 13th place finish despite all that. Chris Buescher, when the final caution came out for Christopher Bell, who was the leader at the time, cutting a right rear tire, brought everyone to pit road, and he and his crew chief Scott Grace took a gamble for two tires while everyone else behind him took four. And those two tires paid dividends as they were holding off the four tires of Chase Elliott and everyone else behind him to get Busher's first win at RFK because he joined this organization two years ago. Of course, he's been with this organization for quite a while. Of course, Xfinity champion for them in 2015, went to Front Row Motorsports in 2016, then to JTG Doherty from 2017 to 2019 before coming back to Roush to replace Stenhouse in the number 17 in 2020. Had, had a couple of good runs over the previous couple of years, but this year has just been so good for Busher and this team. And now he is officially a winner at RFK Racing. And RFK as a merger between Brad Keselowski and Roush. And John Henry, the owner of the Boston Red Sox, which, you know, they play Fenway Park. Their first win all together as an organization. It was just a really good night. It's good to see this organization back at the top. Because they hadn't been to victory lane in five years since Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s two wins during the season at the spring race at Talladega and the night race at Daytona. Now, RFK earlier this year won both the dual races, one with Busher and one with Brad Keselowski. But this time, they are actually winners when it matters the most, where the points count. And I gotta say, watch out for Chris Busher in these next few races and also for next year. Might be a contender to make the playoffs next year. And I got a good feeling that now RFK is on the rise to get back to the top. It's gonna take a little bit of time as well, but still, they're building themselves back up. So, big win for Chris Buescher and an attaboy to his crew chief, Scott Gray. It's a great two-tire call. I was questionable about that decision, but it ended up working in the end. So, big night for Chris Buescher and RFK Racing. Number two, playoff drivers that came away with solid results advance into the next round. Kind of a little bit of a struggle the first couple races for some of the Hendrick cars, but recent weeks, they've bounced back. Of course, Chase Elliott, second place finish, started off the playoffs as the regular season champion, but finished dead last in a crash at Darlington, 
Rebounded last week with some solid stage points and 11th place finish. And Saturday night, he started in the middle of the pack of 23rd and it took him quite a while, but with some strategy and track position gains, he was able to get up to the front by the end of stage two, got some stage points, and midway through the final stage, he locked himself into the next round. Uh, with the 28 point cushion entering the night, you know, he just needed to have a solid, consistent night, no mistakes. They had that night, and they had a chance a couple of times to run down Chris Busher, but there just wasn't enough left traffic at the very end of the race for Busher to get caught up behind for Ellie to try to catch up with the four tires. But nonetheless, a great rebound for the 19 after a pretty rough start to the playoffs, and now hopefully they've got momentum on their side. William Byron, probably been the best of the Hendra drivers these entire playoffs. Ran well at Darlington, won a stage, finished top 10, had a top 10 last week at Kansas. What is as dominant as Alex Bowman was, but was still good the entire night of race. And then Saturday night, they were, you know, consistently, you know, hanging around in the top 10, and then they worked their way to the top five when other guys had problems. They were able to come away with a nice result. Christopher Bell was by far the best car and the entire night. Entering the race, he was the only driver locked into the playoffs. So he didn't need to worry about what happened. He just said, let's go for it. Let's have fun. Let's go try and win a race. Well, they had the speed. They had the car to do it. But as I mentioned, they brought the last caution. When the right rear tire went low and turns one and two, putting some debris down the track, they threw the yellow. They came into pit. They were able to stay in the top five despite all that. Unfortunately, you know, being stuck in some behind some of those lead lap cars with the same amount of tires as he did, Kind of hurt his chances, but it was still a great result for Christopher Bell. He has been by far the most consistent driver out of all the playoff drivers. I mean, yes, we've seen consistency from William Byron in these playoffs so far, Kyle Larson after a rough start, Alex Bowman, and Denny Hamlin. But nobody's been as more consistent in these playoffs than Christopher Bell. There's a good chance if he can have another successful round in this upcoming round, maybe we could be talking about him making a, it all the way to Phoenix and competing for a championship, but... We got ways to go, but he's been very consistent. It was a great night for the 20 team. And Kyle Larson, who at times maybe looked like he had a car that could contend for the win, pretty much he was the best of the Chevy cars the entire night. Unfortunately, he just didn't really have the speed on the long runs like other guys did. The Fords were good on the long runs, of course, Christopher Bell. But it was a good result for the five team nonetheless. And Denny Hamlin, who came in also with a nice points cushion, just came in and wanted to go run well. He, like his teammate Bell, had been consistent in this playoffs, but not like Christopher Bell's results. Hamlin, at the end of the night, came over the ninth place finish. Wasn't really great. They were up front in the early stage of the race. Then they got mired in the top 15 and really just could never get the feel of their car right. And, of course, they had a pit stop on the last stop where they um, didn't tighten up the left rear probably, but, of course, he was able to put it in reverse, get back in his pit stall, and put on a new left rear tire, and they were able to take care of everything, and he went on to finish ninth in the race. Obviously, wanted a little bit more, but nonetheless, a good result. So a great result for those playoff drivers that were able to come away with a solid night and, of course, advance themselves into the next round. Number three, the playoff drivers that have officially been eliminated. They are as followed. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Tyler Reddick, and Austin Dillon. So, to pretty much go over their nights, let's start off first with Kyle Busch. Of course, big news this week, Kyle Busch has announced that he will not be with Joe Gibbs Racing 2023. Instead, he will be joining Richard Childress Racing, driving the number 8 car. I never thought we'd say that after the past history he's been with, with against Richard Childress and some of his drivers, but they apparently mended the ties now, and they're now together as a group, and I'll put out a video a little bit about what to expect with Kyle Busch in this new merger with Richard Childress Racing. He had a really good race car. It wasn't a winning car, but it was still very solid nonetheless. He got 14 stage points, and it felt like that's enough to put him in because, remember, he came into this race two points outside the cutoff, which meant a good points night as well as some stage points could go a long way. Well, at the start of the final stage, Kyle Busch's engine expired, and he went back to the garage and ultimately had to wait a long time in the night until with about a couple laps to go when other guys, multiple laps then were able to pass guys that were slow in front of them, Kyle Busch was eliminated from the playoffs. The first time in Kyle Busch's Cup Series history since this new playoff form was introduced that he's been eliminated in the round of 16. I can't believe it. I really, I honestly thought he would make it into the next round, but it just wasn't meant to be for him. And Kevin Harvick came into this race in a must-win situation after two rough races to start off the playoffs like Kyle Busch. Had the, the freak accident at Darlington with the part failure, wrecking early last week at Kansas. He came into this race needing to win, and he had a great race car the entire night. He was up front, battling with the RFK cars, battling with the Gibbs cars, battling with those Hendrick cars that came on strong late. 
But on the last pit stop, like Denny Hamlin, unfortunately, this was not affecting Hamlin because he was already locked in. Harvick's pit crew didn't tighten up the light front properly, and he had to put it in reverse and back into his pit stall. They changed the tire, but they lost their track position. And with that four tire stop, that slow four tire stop, he could only finish 10th place, and it's not enough to move Kevin Harvick into the next round. Like Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick never been eliminated in the round of 16. He has been eliminated. And as for the two virtual children's cars, Tyler Reddick and Austin Dillon, I had a chance that I had a th thought that Reddick would actually make it in the next round, considering how good he's been in the summer and how he's been good at some of these tracks that we're going to in these playoffs. Well, they didn't really have the speed and the track position for their car the entire night, and they were caught up in a big wreck on the back straightaway that included their teammate, Austin Dillon. That was enough to knock Austin Dillon out of the playoffs, and he came in nine below or a few points below and pretty much knocked him out. As for Tyler Reddick, he was able to fix the car and just limp around hoping to pick up a few more spots, praying that somebody else would fall out. Unfortunately, some of those spots weren't enough for him, and he finishes two points outside of the playoffs. So... A real big bummer for all four of these guys, but unfortunately, four guys had to get eliminated, and these were the guys. It's it's it how it is what it is, and you know some of them are just got to move on and get ready for next year. The most important thing, get you know finish the year strong and be prepared for a stronger season next year in 2023. Number four, mechanical and tire failures. There were so many issues Saturday night I couldn't comprehend it in my mind I'm like what is this first of all the first incident that went down was tire problems and that happened to some non-playoff drivers with right fronts like Harrison Burton and JJ Yaley the first playoff driver to get hit by this was Austin Sendrick he had a right front tire go down in turns one and two had to come to pit road lost five laps in the process and pretty much took him out of contention then Ryan Blaney who was leading early on in the race Cuts a right rear tire, hits the outside wall, and takes our pole sitter, Eric Amaral, with him. Of course, Amaral not in the playoffs. Blaney is. However, Blaney had to go behind the wall because there was something mechanical-wise broken. Now, obviously, they got to minimum speed with the damage vehicle policy. And then they said, okay, if you need to come back to the garage and fix it mechanical-wise, then we'll let you back out there if you can get it done. And they spent multiple, multiple laps behind the wall but they were able to get the car back out there but they had a good points cushion over 12 so ryan blaney did make it into the next round as for other guys daniel suarez was part of that wreck on the back stretch of the early part of stage three after the kyle bush engine failure uh suarez spun around and hit the outside wall collecting guys like austin Dillon and tyler reddick and alex bowman who'd already locked up his spot early on in the race he um damaged the front of his car and he was already out but there was also power steering problems not so much with the like it, there's not just like it was with the Fords and the Toyotas. Chase Briscoe on lap four reported, yeah, I've got no power steering. And he ran the final 496 laps with that car with no power steering in a top 15 spot. That's impressive, but his arms were tired at the end of the night. As for other power steering problems that happened with the Toyotas, Ty Gibbs, Bubba Wallace, they had power steering problems and had to go back behind the wall. Martin Truex Jr. had a mechanical failure as well. He had to go behind the wall. And of course, Kyle Busch had the engine failure. A lot of things I think contributed to these tire failures and these mechanical woes was due to the fact that we ran the race here in the spring, but it was on the dirt. It wasn't on the concrete surface. So we didn't have a good feel about how the next gen car would handle on the concrete surface mechanical wise and tire wise, because obviously we ran a different dirt tire for the race in the spring. It doesn't really put so much of a load on the cars as far as the mechanics go. And obviously it's, you know, it's the first time with the car we had a lot of those on Saturday night, and obviously there's going to be a lot of those crew chiefs and a lot of those teams are going to look back and go, okay, what happened? What happened to the power steering? Why did we start losing water like pressure uh, water pressure for the steering, um, for the, the gauge, for the steering that helps you like try to manhandle the car and not do it so hard that your arm's going to get tired? What happened to these tires? Why did we keep cutting right front tires, right rear tires? What was the problem? There's going to be a lot of teams looking back on this and thinking like, well, you know, we made mistakes we probably maybe pushed a little too hard as far as the air pressure is concerned maybe mechanical wise we didn't set it right with the power steering they're going to go back and look at their nose and thinking like okay the next time we come back here which is next night race next year in september we cannot afford to have these problems again it was just a, a wacky night as far as mechanical failures and tire failures in general for the most part and number five the playoff drivers that are moving on to the next round include christopher bell denny hamlin joey logano kyle larson alex bowman Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Ross Chastain, Austin Sindrick, Daniel Suarez, 
Chase Briscoe, and I'm pretty sure I still remember I had one other guy that probably made it into the next round. Um, I know I did. Uh, I said Lars. I said uh, all the Hendrick cards made Larson, Elliott, Byron, Bowman, Hamlin, Bell, Logano, Cindric, Blaney. Chastain, Swartz, Briscoe. Okay, I, I think I got I think I got them all down. Those are the 12 drivers that are moving on into the next round. Now, some of those playoff drivers that I mentioned that had some problems were able to make it in. I mean, Cindric, as I mentioned, cut that tire five laps down, but I was able to pass some cars that fell out late with mechanical woes, one of them being his teammate Joey Logano. No, it was not a, it was not a working together. It's not like the Richmond scandal in 2013. It had nothing to do with that. There was something wrong with Logano's car at the very end. Cedric passed all those guys and finished in the 20th spot. And that was enough to beat Tyler Reddick and Kyle Busch, who were both in the tie, two points out, to make it into the next round. That's impressive stuff by that two team to continue that car. And Suarez, part of that crash, able to continue on and finish a couple laps down in 19th, but enough to move them into the next round. Ryan Blaine, the points coach he had coming in, really helped him. He's able to make it into the next round. And Chase Briscoe, one of those final 496 lives without power steering. That was one tough SOB to do that. I mean, just a wild night for some of our playoff drivers that had good runs. Some of them had faults, but the drivers that even had good runs and had faults, those that moved on, deserve a round of applause for surviving this wacky first round with this next-gen car. So, we have one round in the books. Time for the next one. The round of 12 consists of Texas Motor Speedway, Talladega Super Speedway, and the Charlotte Roval, which I will be attending, by the way. So, what's going to happen in this round? Will any playoff driver win? Or will a non-playoff driver win? We'll find out when we go to the Lone Star State next week at Texas Motor Speedway. Um, I don't know what to expect. Obviously, we had a pretty lackluster all-star race earlier this year with this next-gen car. Maybe we have a better showing this time. I mean, I don't know. It's Texas. But let's see what happens. Let's hope some playoff drivers are able to come away out of that race with good runs and solid performances. And not get, get so far behind the eight ball, knowing that the next two races are massive wild cards in Talladega and the Roval. We don't know what to expect, but all I know is expect the unexpected. So, what will happen next week? We shall see. So, in the meantime, you all have a wonderful week, and thank you so much for watching this video. And I will put out a recap this week about Kyle Busch and his move to RCR, what it means for him, what it means for the future, and also what it means for the guy who's currently there that he's replacing in the eight car in Tyler Reddick. So, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, and once again, congratulations to Chris Busher and Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing on getting back to the top. They are winners at Bristol. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Let's go racing!